Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Rebecca and I'm Tackle Junkie 81's wife. For those of you who are unfamiliar with me, I did a video a few months back for the spring and fall turnover. And I also just did a deeper unboxing, which I was the one that did that unboxing because I'm gonna be the one using that in some of my upcoming science videos. So if you haven't had a chance to check either one of those out, I'll go ahead and put the links in the description below. Do check those out. Um, you will notice that I am in different clothes than what I am in in the video, and that's because the file was corrupted for the introduction, so I did a new one for you. So hope you guys enjoy the video. Now, barometric pressure is really atmospheric pressure, and we just sometimes call it bar barometric pressure because we use a barometer to measure it. And that is the force exerted by the weight of the air per unit area. And we generally hear it in terms of inches of mercury. When your weather forecaster gives a forecast and they talk about pressure, it is generally in inches of mercury and one atmosphere is equal to uh, approximately 29.921 inches of mercury. Now to illustrate this for you, I'll draw a column of air just to give you an idea as to what we're talking about here. Now, at any given time, uh, we have one atmosphere or 14.7 pounds pushing against us. And now the weight of the air is due to the gravitational pull that the Earth has on that air. So imagine here, this is our one square inch area, right here. X marks the spot. This is our surface. You can call this the surface of the lake. Imagine some fish down in here. And this is the top of the atmosphere. Now the weight being exerted through this column of air right here on this one square inch area is 14.7 pounds or again one atmosphere which is also 29.921 inches of mercury. So when we start talking about high pressure and low pressure uh, when you have high pressure, you're going to have more air molecules, which is more weight being pushed and forced on that one unit area, that one square inch unit area. And when you have low pressure, you're going to have less air molecules pushing on that area. So you're going to have a lower inches per mercury. Now when we experience high pressure, we're experiencing blue skies, fair weather conditions, and the pressure is around 30.7 uh, inches of mercury. And when we're experiencing low pressure, we generally have cloudy skies, quite possibly storms, um, and you're going, your pressure is going to be down around the quite possibly 28 inches of mercury. Now, when you see the news, you see um, high pressure as like a blue H, and you'll see low pressure as a red L. Now, the high pressure center is the point at which there is the highest pressure compared to the areas around it. So as you move out from that center, the pressure is going to gradually decrease. So it's going to go down. Now, in that center, you have um, sinking air, and that air, that sinking air, does not allow for the upward motion which is required to, for clouds to form and for precipitation to happen. So, in the low pressure, you have that where it's at the lowest, at the low pressure center, and as you move out, that pressure gradually increases. So in the very center, you have the uh, perfect circumstances for that upward motion of air to happen so that you can have clouds and you can have precipitation. Now fronts are the boundaries between those low, or cold and warm air fronts that are moving in. And those are typically low pressure systems that are moving in. And generally, once those have moved in and gone through, 
you, within about a 24 hour period, you start to experience those high pressure again. Those pre that pressure gradually rises again until you get up to those high pressure and you start experiencing those fair weather conditions again. Now that you have a better understanding of high pressure and low pressure, let's talk about hydrostatic pressure. And this is the pressure that is exerted by a column of fluid. So as you know, water is more dense than the air. So the pressure being exerted on a fish by water is much more than that of the atmosphere of air, which again is just going to kind of affect that uppermost layer of the water. Now you have a hydrostatic gradient, which is the rate at which the pressure changes. And that goes by, I believe it's 0 0.433 PSI per foot. So as you go down throughout the water column, the pressure is going to increase. So the further you go, the further increase of pressure that you have. And that is again throughout the water column. Now fish have what is known as a hydrostatic equilibrium. And this is when they're upright within the water column. So you've got a force of pressure coming down on the fish from the water above it. You have a force of pressure coming up from beneath the fish, which is the pressure from the water below it, and then you have the weight of the fish pushing down. So you have those three forces that are working together in which the fish maintains that hydrostatic equilibrium. And it does so by the use of its air bladder, or its swim bladder. As you can see in the image below, um, the swim bladder is a sac filled with a volume of gas. Now, when we take into account Boyle's law, which states that as pressure increases, so as pressure goes up, volume decreases, so volume goes down. And as pressure decreases or goes down, volume increases, so the volume will go up. So when you take that information into effect, you can see how the amount of pressure being exerted onto a fish affects its swim bladder, which therefore affects where it's going to be found throughout that water column. And it will use its swim bladder by either releasing some gas or by taking in some gas in order to again maintain that hydrostatic equilibrium. So you can see now how pressure truly affects a fish. And this is why some of you who fish on larger, really deep bodies of water may, um, when you find those fish really deep, and you want to bring them up really slow, because if you bring that fish up too fast from the depths, it's not going to have time to acclimate, which again, it's got to acclimate itself to the changes in pressure, so it's got to adjust that swim bladder to adjust for those changes in pressure. And if it doesn't have the chance to do that, the fish can experience what's known as barotrauma, which is the human equivalent of the bends. So some of you who do fish deeper water and find your fish really deep, that is something that you do want to watch out for and be aware of. Now with all that being said, there is no definitive answer that states that barometric pressure directly affects fishing. Um, but now that you understand and know what barometric pressure is, you can take that information and go out and observe your own bodies of water and find out what the fish do before a low pressure system moves in or during a high pressure system where your fish are throughout the water column. Plus, with, with your understanding of hydrostatic pressure, you can understand why a fish may be in a depth that it's in depending upon the pressure being exerted on it and it's finding that, again, that hydrostatic equilibrium where it's most comfort, excuse me, most comfortable. So I hope this video helped you out. I hope it clear up some of your uh, questions regarding barometric pressure and even what those state as far as the weather is concerned. So if you have any questions, please leave those in the comments below. Also, please leave in the comments below um, any future information that you'd like to learn about or anything else that you'd like to see or if there was a certain part that you found confusing or didn't fully understand, please again let me know in the comments below. I do have a video on the um, app that comes with the Deeper coming up, and I'm also going to talk about John Alden Knight's Solunar Theory, and for those of you who are unfamiliar with that theory, that's the theory that relates the sun and moon phases to fishing. 
So do keep an eye out for that. That should be up sometime in February. And again, please leave comments below. Like the video if you liked it. Give us a thumbs up and we'll talk to you soon.